okay i had two uh, maintenance plant and location there is nothing like maintenance station ah, that's maintenance workstation or workshop <laughs> yeah I, I don't know if they'll really try to get you like this but I just want to emphasize the fact that it's important for you to to try and remember the exact name as it is so that you recognize it you know if they sometimes they just put something which is not there and it sounds very plausible like this okay now personally I, I you know I don't like to trick people like this but you know given the task that I'm assigned <laughs> okay which of the following represent valid configurations in PM a and C right so in other in other words uh, B is not valid because X and Y do the planning and execution for themselves and both provide for something else you know that is not uh, for a given plan its maintenance planning uh, can be done by only one other plan its maintenance execution can be done only by one other plan okay so B doesn't uh, B violates that uh, which of the following can be a maintenance work center B and D uh, B C D sorry B C D right because work center it can be a person group of people or a machine or group of machines right all of those can be work centers not just in maintenance actually even in production same thing No, it, equipment is not a maintenance work. See, maintenance work center. Yeah. Oh, no. They use the term differently. Right? It's not a work center. Right. If something is to be used in performing work, it has to be a work center. Right. Because when you say work center, that work center master is the one that will have data for capacity, cost, and other things. Whereas equipment is just, you know, it won't have capacity and things like that because you know, you're not using it for work. It's part of your, you know, uh, production uh, facility and so on. Okay. Um, okay. Four. Uh, which of the following are technical objects? Yeah, B and C. Once again, there was slight uh, fraud here. Functional location, functional area, you know. Functional location is, but not functional area. Yep. <laughs> okay. So again, just just to emphasize, see, they may not try to get you like this, but it's always good for you to know the exact terms. You know, safety margin increases if you're clear. Otherwise, you tend to be very loose, and then everything looks correct. Beyond a point, <laughs> it gets difficult. Okay. Five is very con controversial. Some people will say all four are correct. Okay, uh, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but the, the, the immediate use is these two things. And just like she said earlier, well, you might get all this, but if you don't use it properly, then you're not, you're not going to get these two. Okay, so the immediate requirement is you can analyze maintenance breakdown data and you can record maintenance costs. That you can definitely do. Whether you can go ahead and use that to increase your efficiency or profitability, we don't know. Okay. So anyway, uh, those are the two things that are coming from the notes. The other two things may or may not occur. Uh, what is the relationship between structure indicator and the coding template? Right. So the idea is that the uh, coding template only tells you the format of what it looks like. Meaning at what position, what characters can occur. Right. It just shows you the structure. But the structure indicator is an actual thing that you have created using the coding template. Right? So the structure indicator is the actual indicator that you have assigned to a particular functional location. Right? You said this has this number C1 hyphen M2305, etc. That's a structure indicator. Whereas the coding template is just says the first let thing has to be an alphabet, the second one is a number, third is a hyphen, etc. Okay, so one is the format, the other is an actual object using that format. One quick question. Yeah. Something you would assign to uh, a serial number is an inventory item, right? But could you assign, would, would something with a serial number also have a 
It is for the place. Functional location, it's for the place. Specifically. Uh, okay, what do the what role do the hierarchy levels play in the structure indicator? Well, oh, I didn't even write an answer. <laughs> right. Exactly. It defines at which character a level ends and the next level begins. Okay, or actually where the new level begins. Okay, so it just shows you the, the levels. Uh, when a new function location is created, it fits into the existing hierarchy based on the structure indicator assigned to it. So from the structure indicator, the system can figure out, oh, this is the child of this particular node. Okay, so it's based on the structure indicator assigned to it. A unit of function equipment is installed in a functional location. Okay, so equipment is installed in a functional location. What do we need to do to be able to perform inventory management for equipment? Oh no, that is if you want to do inventory management for uh, individual units here in general. So just link it to a material, right? See, if you're talking about inventory management for individual pieces of equipment. Okay, this is in general. Material. Okay. Because only materials you can do materials management. So you have to link this to a material, then you can do it. Okay, next question, same thing. Uh, what do we need to do to enable automatic placement of equipment into storage when it's removed? Uh, link it to a material once again. Yeah. Oh, no, but once you make it a material, You don't have to, if it's, uh, you can, you, you can do inventory management for any material. Oh, okay. Okay. So link it and then say that you want automatic inventory man. That's a good point. And select or opt okay yeah good point well which of the following statements about serial numbers are true b c d yeah a is not true a sounds like it can be true but it's not uh, b one material could have multiple serial numbers of course your material may be p c and you may have a thousand PCs in your organization, each with a separate serial number. A serial number could occur from multiple materials. It can. Because your serial numbers may be just one to thousand. And uh, for PCs, you have material number 50, a uh, serial number 50. And for, you know, printers, you have serial number 50 as well. Okay. So it's just a number. So it can record. Combination of plant number, serial numbers, unique, there's nothing like that. No, same material obviously same serial number can occur for multiple materials so that uh, automatically that invalidates okay uh, so the material equipment master record enables tracking of the history for equipment with a serial number right so for every equipment with a serial number in other words for every serial number there is an equipment master record equipment master Equipment master, right? No, it says serial master. The book says serial master? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's take a look. In that case, I'm mistaken. Yeah, this is the one, right? Oh. 
Oh no, I think we are talking of a different slide. No, yeah, equivalent master for each serial number. Okay. Because I didn't remember serial master, so it was a little. Okay, you have 14, I sort of screwed up a little bit. Uh, I shouldn't have put maintenance bomb here, because maintenance bomb is general, right? We wanted specific terms. So, uh, functional location bomb definitely is nothing like a serial number bomb, is nothing like a plant bomb. And if I had put something different here like equipment bomb, then that would have been a valid answer too, right? Uh, as it is, it sort of makes it very ambiguous. So it's my mistake. I shouldn't have. Had, I shouldn't have said maintenance bomb, right? And incidentally, uh, the three bombs that you can use for maintenance are uh, functional location bomb, equipment bomb, and material bomb, right? You can use material bomb also for maintenance. Yeah. Yeah, I gave you an example, right? Suppose you've got laptops. You've got 100 laptops in your organization. The serial numbers are 1 to 100, right? Suppose you gave the serial numbers 1 to 100. You also have 100 printers in your organization. They also have serial numbers 1 to 100. That's the way it works. Okay, so the same serial number, it's just identifying the particular piece within a given material, that's all. Okay, yeah, so 14, uh, take this out and say probably equipment bomb, in which case it will become 2. Okay, in which case there would be 2 correct answers, functional location bomb and if this is equipment bomb that would be acceptable. As it is, it's, it's a little weird, the question. Okay, uh, what do we need to do to use a material bomb for maintenance purposes, right? I just said you can use a material bomb for maintenance. But what do we need to do? Uh, we need to first, of course, create the material, create the bomb, right? But then we have to somehow connect this bomb to the technical object, right? We have to somehow connect this bomb to the technical object. So, for example, suppose this technical object we are talking about is a, a serial number, is an equipment with a serial number, right? Then what you will do is you will go to the master record of that technical object. And within that master record, there is a field called uh, construction type. In that field, you create a link to this bomb that you just create. Okay, that's what we are talking about. Right, so create a material bomb, a material and a bomb, then use the, in the master record of the object, in the construction type field, put a link to the material bomb. Right? Now, under what conditions would you use this? You know, what's the purpose of this feature? Of using a material bomb for maintenance. Um, oh yeah, that's one thing. Uh, in that case, you can use a equipment bomb, right? Why use a material bomb? What What's the point of this uh, backdoor sort of thing? Because the, the equipment bomb doesn't wouldn't um, give you what it takes to make. Like you have text object or some of the document items like the manual document, not the equipment Those can be in the equipment box. The main purpose, you were saying something? But that you can do with, the, with this as well. See, the main point is this. Let's say you've got an equipment, right? Half HP pump. Right? You've got a hundred of those. They're all identical, absolutely identical. And they all have their own serial number each. Right? Now, there's no point in keeping a separate bomb for each of those things, each of those serial numbers. Right? So, in this case, it's a good idea for you to just treat that as a material and have one bomb for it. Right? Just have one bomb and connect that single bomb to all the equipment, all the serial numbers. That's the scenario we're talking about. Okay, no need to repeat the bomb for each of those. It's identical bomb. 
Why repeat it? Create it once and then just connect it to all these. So if you, for example, you'll go to the, uh, the equipment master record and in the construction type field, you'll put in that bomb. That's it. Okay. So then you, the same bomb can be used for all the things. That's the main purpose for which it's used. Okay. Uh, which report helps us to view both planned and unplanned material usage for material order, uh, for a maintenance order? It's called, they call it the materials where used list. Okay, so you could, uh, from there you'll be able to see use, you know, planned usage, unplanned usage, etc. There's an example of that in the notes as well. In the reporting section, they, they show this. Uh, at what levels are activities and tasks maintained for a maintenance notification? Okay, this I don't think I discussed in class explicitly, right? But if you look at the diagram, it becomes pretty clear what it is. If you look at the diagram for maintenance notification, yeah, this one. See so here you've got, this is the header. These are the items. See, so notice that the notification can have actions, it can have tasks, the header. And the items can also have actions. Okay. So really these are maintained at both the header and the item level. Right? And it makes sense. Right? It makes sense because you may have several items in the notification for which you want to say this is to be done, this is to be done, or this has been done, this has been done, or some more detailed description of what was done. That is fine. But you may have some of these activities and tasks at the level of the whole notification itself. Right? Over and above just specific objects. Right? For example, uh, maybe one of the things might be, uh, you know, some, some mishap happened in the plant or some, uh, you know, some breakdown occurred. And this breakdown was with, respect, was with respect to this machine and this machine. Right? So two objects are referred in this. But for the whole problem that occurred, you might want some actions to be taken. Right? You might say, for example, uh, you know, uh, change the preventive maintenance uh, procedure to incorporate X, Y, Z. Right? It may not be for this object or this object. It may be general. Okay, for the for the whole issue itself. So in that case, those notification activities and tasks would be at the header level. Okay, so just remember that it's possible that you've got activities and tasks at the header level as well as at the item levels. 